Hello and welcome to episode 161 of the Truly Daybox Show. This is a bi-weekly podcast where the two of us come together uh, every two weeks, uh, still not used to that, uh, to come together to uh, talk about K-pop and whatever's current in the K-pop industry. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, uh, sorry for the like gap week. I basically, my family had like a COVID scare, so I... Couldn't be at my house because my sister had to quarantine, so I had to leave before she got to my house from being sent home from college, and yeah, basically I was without a computer for like a week, and so we couldn't record, but we're back, um, and yeah, anyways, um, as always, I'm joined by Nate. Keep on ticking of my heartbeat, babe. Classic NCT lyrics. Amazing. All right. Um, and I'm Jacob. Hashtag no blown out. And uh, yeah, so I guess uh, first thing I'd like to mention is uh, in July, we will be uh, guests on a pretty cool event that's being um, organized by a K-pop social night called uh, KPSN Podcast Fest. And uh, we'll be guesting on that. And um, yeah, so we'll be putting a link in the description for that because uh, um, if you buy a ticket, all the proceeds and stuff will be going to uh, mental illness charity. So it's pretty cool. We're excited to do that. Um, what kind of uh, show are we going to be doing again? Yeah, so basically there will be like one hour where we're interviewed by the by someone um, that's part of the part of the event and that'll just be like asking us questions about like how we got started and just generic mm-hmm. like general like question interview questions like that um like who we want on the show and stuff like that yeah and then there's gonna be one more i think it's an hour slot where we just do a show um so it could be live or pre-recorded we were thinking probably doing something um like a q a um yeah like a live q a and then we can all like i also i probably for like part of that or like maybe for the first half i wanted to just talk about our discord um yeah. and like all the cool stuff we do and and um because that's like obviously a big part of our community yep um so that's probably what we'll end up doing for that but yeah like jacob said uh it's for charity the tickets uh, proceeds go to charity so don't hesitate and if you buy within the week after this goes up um nine days so that would be friday Six, yeah seven the 21st. days after this goes up yeah so friday the 21st of may um is when the pre-sale price goes away so if you buy before then the sale t- the tickets are only five dollars um but if you buy after that it's 15 um and then it ha- it's happening in July, um, so it'll be a weekend. We'll either be we'll be on during one of the days, either afternoon or evening slots. Um, we're not; it's not one hundred percent set yet. Um, so we'll let you guys know when we have more information. But yeah, yep. you can find information about that in the description or on our Twitter. Uh, it's one of our most recent. I think I pinned it. If I didn't, I'll pin it later. And it's also in our announcements on our Discord. Yep. All right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have links in the description and stuff like that. So, uh, if you're interested, check it out. Anyways, um, speaking of Discord, uh, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, we do a lot of, like, cool activities and stuff, like song ratings, uh, Fantasy League, which is, like, you know, building a K-pop group. Like a, like as if it was a fantasy football team sort of thing and, uh, you know, like collecting points based on like comebacks and, uh, you know, brand rankings and stuff like that. Um, yep. We also have been doing K-pop bingo, uh, which I think we, we just wrapped up the first uh, season of that, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Th- I think that just ended because somebody won. Um, but we'll be doing that periodically as well. Um And then on top of that, we have a ton of different channels for discussing all sorts of different topics and stuff. And our community is pretty cool. So, yeah, feel free to join. It's a nice community. Um, If you want a cool place to talk about K-pop or whatever else, it's a good community to join. Mm -hmm. All right. And so with that... um, And then also, 
check out my unboxings. True, um, yes. Nate does a so, monthly unboxing stream. Yep, so I've been doing monthly unboxing streams. You can see me unbox whatever K-pop albums or merch I bought. You can see me unbox this giant, giant pink panda pillow that's like two feet long. It's huge. Um, but this was 10th anniversary A pink merch. Yeah, I I'll be honest. Um, I I expected that thing to be like a quarter of the size it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what this one's. This one's like a like just like a couch pillow. Yeah, like just the head, and then this thing's just a giant two foot long pillow. Um, but yeah, and then obviously I like unbox my albums and stuff. Um, this month I'll be unboxing 14 NCT albums that I bought. Um, when they reprinted all of them, I was like, screw it. I'm going to try to buy NCT's discography. Um, so I got a bunch there. I also got the concert merch for the last Dreamcatcher concert. So those are the two main things I'll be unboxing at the end of this month. I do the last Sunday of each month. So it'll be May 30th. Cool. All right. And then uh, with that, um, I guess, you know, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave us reviews on iTunes and stuff. That helps a lot. Um, also, like our videos if you like it. Um, and, of course, comment. Uh, give us feedback on the podcast. Tell us your opinions on the albums we review, stuff like that. It's, we always appreciate it. Yep. All right. So, I guess with that, we can uh, just move right into our first album review of uh four this week well three albums and a single three, uh, two mini albums an album and a single you skipped our our normal segment yeah every time i always <laughs> mess up the intro in some way all right all right reverting back people who are on youtube you got spoiled of what the first one is but you probably already saw it in the title anyway so it's not really a spoiler anyway yeah, yeah um, be in the title. nate what have you been listening to since we last convened um so it's been like a month now um obviously i've been listening to things we're about to review um other than that uh i've been listening to weekly a lot Uh, i've been listening i did like for a few of the drives down to look at houses i was listening to nct's discography um so i think that's pretty much it with like nct and weekly other than things we're about to review um cool yeah yeah for me uh i haven't really been listening to like that much new music recently um i've been listening to a lot of Taeyeon, like just her purpose album i've been listening to that a lot these days uh i've been listening to stacy asap yeah uh, stacy asap such such a good song um we were going to review that but but again last episode just got like whirlwinded so (laughs) Yeah, if you want to know our opinions on it, join Discord and ask, mm-hmm. and we'll uh, we'll tell you. ASAP it's really is a good, good song. Yes, it's a great <laughs> song. Anyway, um, yeah, pretty much that, and then also like just the stuff we've been reviewing, uh, especially Itzy. I've been listening to Itzy's mini album quite a bit. So, yep. All right. Speaking, Speaking of, of, now we can go into our first topic. Itzy's mini album which is new guess who it's it's you spoiler alert but yeah. <laughs> um yeah so the it's he's back and it's very interesting i think like i <laughs> i don't know there's been a lot of uh contention over i think the title track just because i feel like it's such a completely it's not even completely different i can't even say that no, it's, it's like not. it's the it's music style somewhat fits different them, but it's a different vibe for them if that yes. makes sense stealing sam's they a, word yes they have a different <laughs> uh they have a different aura i guess to use that kind of word i guess um yeah so anyways um so the title track uh the first song in the album is mafia in the morning and uh yeah it's 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 their most like hip hop like oriented uh like single that they've done and the most like mm-hmm. aggressive and hard hitting for sure. Um yeah, when I first listened to it, I was like, I I'm not sure how to feel about it, but I'm like I had fun listening to it. And then since then I've it's definitely grown on me a lot. I actually really like this uh um single. It's probably still only like my third favorite of their um 
singles. I think it's better than actually Dawa Dawa and, and uh, Icy are the two bottom for me. And then I really <laughs> like I really like Wannabe and and Not Shy. So yeah, yeah. This is this is third place. Yeah, for me, I'm in the other camp. Um, and Dawa Dawa and Icy are probably my favorites. So um, they more than Wannabe. Like, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. It's been a long time since I've listened to them, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this. I like you said, it. it's not like it's a huge departure. It's they're doing their usual like talk rapping, like singing. Like there's it's, it's not like very melodic. Um, but this one is more like darker and mature. Like you said, it's more like hip hop, like hard hitting. Yeah. And to me, I just like what I liked about it was that like fun energy and this yeah. doesn't really have it. And it's yeah. not like, yeah, the thing that's, that's different about it is that this feels like uh, it's got like a dark tint to it. Whereas yeah. the rest of their songs have a very distinctly bright, like yes. feeling to yes, them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so like, and so I don't like think it's bad and like, I don't think they have to do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, I just prefer what they've done before with that, like, brighter energy. Um, also, yeah. f- with this song in particular, it doesn't really have a hook that grabbed me. I know, oh, like, I, uh, see, that's people one of the things really that... like the Mafia part, yeah. like, but I don't know. For some reason, it just didn't grab me. Yeah, the, see, that the Mafia, the Mafia, yeah, we do it like a Mafia. Yeah, like, that part, yeah. like, gets stuck in my head, like, all the time. Yeah, I really for some like reason, that. it just didn't grab me. Yeah. So, yep, that's the the title track in the morning. Um, yeah. Next is uh, "Sorry Not Sorry," which I this is another one where it took me a couple of listens before it like made sense to me because at mm-hmm. first, uh, like the sort of like bluesy like sort of like guitar lick like that they have that kind of repeats throughout the song. I felt mm-hmm. it like was kind of disjointed from the rest of it. But like as I got used to the song, it just like it clicked really, really well, and I actually really like that part about the song. Mm-hmm. Um, like just that paired with like the aggressive like rap parts, I think really, really works for it. And I think yeah, this is one of my favorite songs on the on the mini album, top two probably of the the B sides. Yeah, so I like this way more. Um, so when I first, when the album came out, I only listened to the single and I didn't really like it. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really check out the album, and I knew we would probably review it, so I knew I'd check it eventually. But yeah. Um, this like just right from the start, I really liked like you said that like western bluesy guitar mixed with like the really sassy vocals that the, are at the start of the song. I really liked, um, and it hooked me like instantly. The I really love the verses. I think the chorus is a bit too messy um, with the instrumentals. Like, Mm. I like the rap a lot, but the instrumentals, there's, like, so much going on with, like, the glitches and, like, all that. It's, like, really, it kind of clashes and takes away from the actual rap. Um, I could see that. I feel like like I like, I I I feel like I like the chaos because it kind of adds energy to it. Yeah, but I it's can like, see that. I think it's like it's you. That's just like what kind of group they are. Is they kind of feed off the chaos in their music. Yeah, and and I agree with that. Like I I, th- I don't like I don't dislike it because it's like chaotic and energetic. But for me, yeah. it was like it kind of just overshadowed the actual rap itself to mm. where like I couldn't really even p- like pay attention to it very easily. And yeah, I, th- I think like so like to me it it would have been better if it was a little toned down or even just like the volume was lowered a little bit so it wasn't so overpowering yeah yeah that makes sense um yeah next is uh kidding me which like uh so i liked every single song on this album this is actually a first for itzy because they usually have like one or two songs that kind of stink up their mini albums in my opinion yeah, it's um, been a long time since I listened to B sides. Yeah, so. like they they usually <laughs> they usually have some that just completely just drop a like steamer like right all over the whole album. But <laughs> like for this, I pretty much like everything. But um, this one's probably my least favorite, despite like me liking it. I think it's just like just because it kind of stands out the least, like stylistically speaking. Mm-hmm. Like I don't I don't feel like this song like feels like uniquely itzy. I guess whereas the rest of them I feel like kind of 
fit hits you decently much uh, decently well like even tennis which i believe that's the one that was uh I, f I believe that was the one that was uh um written by sm producers or whatever it was either that or shoot it was one of those two um i'll look up i'll look that up while you're talking after this but um yeah kidding me uh it's good it's catchy like the the chorus is fun like i usually don't like those kind of job well, choruses yeah i was gonna say I, it has a drop chorus that's why you don't like yeah, it yeah but yeah, like I, I, I feel like it still works for this song, but I feel like that is why it doesn't stand out quite as much. Like, mm -hmm. like it's still fun and, uh, and not annoying, because I think that's really how you can like ruin a drop chorus if you make it annoying. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like this is good. It's just not. It doesn't like blow me away or anything. So. Yeah, for me, I this reminded me a lot of the single. Um, it's similar, um, with that like darker, mature vibe, um. I think it. I like it better because it transitions into a more like melodic pre-chorus, mm -hmm. um, with like a pretty catchy build. And really, my only issue is the drop chorus. I it's not bad, um, but I think it's like you said, it's kind of like generic, yeah, in terms of how it comes out. Uh, but I think overall outside of the pre-chorus with that melodic build it's pretty similar like i have similar issues to it than i do with the with the single um but yeah. i do think i do like this a little bit more than the single yeah um i didn't screw up the screen capture did it <laughs> no no, no. Okay. I, I made sure to open another window yeah i am not immediately finding which song was uh because I remember people were talking about one of the songs was by uh, SM Producers. So, yeah, if anybody knows, put it in the comments or tell us on Discord. Um, I think it was Tennis, though. But I might be wrong about that. Anyway. Um, yeah, so next is Wild Wild West. Um, yeah. This song I thought was quite interesting. Because I, I feel like it's like... A, like it fits itsy really well but i also feel like i could see twice doing this song and it would not feel out of place mm -hmm. if that makes sense um i think it's mostly the the wild wild west like uh chorus it kind of reminds me of like twice songs like maybe like touchdown or like something like that um yeah yeah anyway it's it's this is uh fun just kind of i feel like the reason i i think it sounds like it could be twice is just because uh this is kind of like a jyp uh type of b-side i guess it just kind of like fits like i can like oh i can like kind of tell that this is from a jyp group um yeah anyways it's it's a fun pop song and uh yeah it's a good song yeah i this one just felt some this starts similar to sorry not sorry mm -hmm. um and i think it had a nice build to the chorus, and then the chorus didn't have that same problem I had that so Sorry Not Sorry had, where it was just, like, kind of messy instrumentals. Yeah. Um, I think this overall is probably the most, like, itsy. We were talking about this in Discord earlier, but this is, like, the most itsy, like, standard itsy song. Okay. Um, like yeah, because it's, it's like energetic. Me, that doesn't... There's a lot of shout rapping. Like, yeah. it, it's I... similar to what they did before. Yeah, to me, it doesn't really feel like it's distinctly itsy, though, which is why I think I brought up the twice comparison, because, uh, like, I don't know, like, like I, I see it, but it doesn't feel like any of their singles either, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Although, I guess you could say, it, like, I guess, I guess it is, like, a lot of their uh, B-sides, though, so, yeah. All right, next is Shoot, which is, again, a, a more of a, like, hip-hop, like, style song. Um, this one is like, like kidding me where like, it didn't quite like blow me away or anything. Uh, really? Hmm. yeah, well, I think it's fun, but it's not, it's not like, it's just kind of like, like I can kind of just vibe with it and it's just, you know, like it's mm -hmm. fun, but it's not something that I'm like spam, uh, playing or anything, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. We're like the opposite on this album, which doesn't happen very often. This is easily my favorite song. Um, I, I felt like the song was like the most cohesive and like put together. I, I thought it had a really great instrumental hook. 
Um, like you said, it's just a really great vibe. Yeah. Um, I liked the like nice touch of electric guitar that they throw in like really suddenly throughout the song. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just I just really really liked the song. Yeah, I think I think the reason it doesn't quite blow me away is because I came into the it's the album like expecting like high energy, and I think this mm-hmm. is more like again like more vibey, like kind of just laid yeah. back. Um, yeah. So I I really like the the tracks like in the morning. Sorry, not sorry, and then uh, yeah, and then this next track uh, tennis I thought was actually really good. I like this quite a bit. I, I'm pretty sure this is the SM produced track because it doesn't sound like anything coming out of JYP. And I could see this on like a Red Velvet album or something, probably, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, a nice uh, pop track using some like guitars and, you know, clap percussion. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's fun. I like it. Yep. Yeah, it... it- it was good. I I had some nice stylistic choices. I was surprised how much I liked it coming from them. Um so Yeah. I think I think I like that they have like something like this like just one off on the album that's not like necessarily like this doesn't sound like it's an itzy song, but I like that they have this on their album cuz I think it kind of like diverse, diversifies them a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's good to have uh some kind of just different but good like b-sides on your album that aren't necessarily exactly like what you're known for kind of thing yeah um so it's good to see them like stray away a little bit from their like signature like like shout singing and stuff like that and kind of do more of a just nice traditional k-pop type song yeah so yeah. Again, uh, correct me or not if the, uh, on whether or not I'm right on if this was the SM produced one, or yeah, maybe I'm making, or maybe, and or maybe, or maybe I'm just making that up. But I swear to God, I heard people saying that in Discord. Um, yeah. So, yep. Uh, so yeah. Overall, I thought this was actually a really good mini album for Etsy because, again, usually they usually have one or two tracks that just kind of ruin the, the rest of the mini album for me or. It's not that they ruin the other songs, but they ruin the the score that I would give the mini album, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, whereas this, I thought everything was at least like consistently like pretty good, at least. So yeah, yeah there's no I, like stinker tracks on this. Yeah, I was surprised how much I liked the album, considering how much I didn't really like the single. Um, so yeah, I, I was pretty happy with it. Yep. So yeah, all right. I guess with that. Um, yeah, it's e pretty good. Um, I hope they have more where this came from because I think this is like easily the strongest uh, mini album so far. Again, no like annoying songs on the album, so I think that's like a big improvement. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I guess moving on, we can just go on to the the next album. Yeah. So next we have NCT Dreams' new f- their first full album, uh, yes. Hot Sauce. And it starts off straight with the single Hot Sauce, and I I <laughs> literally couldn't write my thoughts the first time I listened to this, because usually, like, I write down, like, my notes as I'm listening to it for the first time. Like, most of yeah. my, my, like, review notes are my, like, first impressions of the songs. Yeah. But I, like, literally couldn't write anything, <laughs> because I was like... First, I was like, okay, that's an interesting vocal sample with the shouting at the beginning. And then it transitions into, like, typical NCT song. You have, like, Mark rapping. You have, like, some really nice acoustic guitar, like, vo- backed vocals for the pre-chorus. I'm like, okay, I'm jamming to this. This is a good NCT song. And then the chorus happened yeah. and the vocal <laughs> sample came back. And there's, like, sultry whispering. And I just could not stop laughing at the chorus. Um... I, it's so ridiculous, but overall, I like the song. I, it was just like too ridiculous for me to process at first. Yeah. I think, I think the vocal sample is a little much. Um, I think I'll eventually learn to just tune it out or it'll get used to it. But the rest of the song, I think, is just like a pretty solid NCT song. Yeah. 
Yeah, honestly, like I <laughs> when I listened to this, like for the first time, I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> because it's like this song is like such a it's like such a crack dream, like of, yeah, of an so NCT weird. song, you know? Um like I, I feel like usually when NCT goes like super out there, I don't end up liking it. But like I, I actually really, really like this song. I thought it's like really a lot of fun, and uh, I actually like the vocal sample. I just I think it's yeah. just it's funny. It like makes me smile. Oh yeah, like, I, I um, agree with that. Yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> like I don't know how they arrived at like this song, but like I feel like it's another. Uh, like there's all these different sections it just jumps all the way around yes. between all these different styles kind of like uh i guess this is the default comparison but kind of like an i got a boy like sort of thing um to compare to snsd but um yeah it's it's not quite as jarring as i got a boy for sure i think it's more cohesive uh like yeah. normally but but like if you just like isolate each part of the song it's like <laughs> what is even going on yeah because it's got you like you said like the vocal sample and then it's got like almost like spanish sounding like guitars and stuff and it's well i actually looked up the vocal samples in spanish oh it is i don't know, okay, what, that I don't know what it says but cause well, I, I guess spanish. i guess actually it makes sense because the the mv was kind of like western styled and they got cactuses and stuff on the the cover so i guess it makes i guess that's what they're going for at least i think it was in spanish don't don't yeah. crucify me if I'm and, wrong about that. And uh yeah, correct us in the comments by the way if we're wrong on anything. Um Yeah, I another thing, I don't know who the heck came up with like calling this song like hot sauce and like making this the like like uh if you're watching the YouTube video you can see the um the album art. It's just like this weird like like hot sauce packet. It's like what you get with a uh, like a taco kit or something like yeah <laughs> you know it's like yeah it's just so weird like i actually expected not to like this album just because i thought the like the the concept looks so weird um you know just like this weird like crazy like like psychedelic uh hot sauce like drawing or whatever um but yeah i was i was pleasantly surprised uh yeah hot sauce is a really really fun song so yeah yeah it's it's not what i expected at all um i'm looking it up so it is it it's it's definitely spanish um it seems like it it's like saying like it google says it translates to shake it down but so i assume they're saying like okay. shake the bottle of hot sauce type thing yeah is is what that's going for um yeah. okay moving on we have diggity uh i think at the beginning i the vo group vocal la like the layered group vocals at the beginning of the song were kind of messy in my opinion mm. but transitioning out of that intro i love this song it gives me shiny vibes um which is like something early dream gave me a lot okay um, with like because there's like so much harmony and there's like all these weird synths mixed in it's just it feels very shiny-esque to me um yeah yeah it's funny you say that because uh i the impression i got was actually like red velvet uh yeah style. The, like, yeah i could see that too yeah um but yeah i love the instrumentals of the song they're really varied and interesting and keep you really engaged and i think the upbeat like rapping like matches the harmonies and the instrumentals really well yeah yeah the my first impression was it, it, it like kind of sounded like something off of like the red um red velvet's yeah. album um just like the like the way the the chorus is kind of just like saying the the name of the song and then going through like the layered vocals mm -hmm. um yeah i'm not sure exactly what song it reminds me of maybe like huff and puff or uh it also kind of reminds me of that one song that goes don't you wait no more i don't remember what the the title of it is but yeah. um i think it's yeah. wait i think it's wait no more maybe i don't know maybe i don't know um anyway uh that actually might have been a russian roulette i don't i don't remember but um yeah this is like a really catchy song again um uh, yeah, i feel like a, i feel like it kind of i is that actually what it's just called yeah tell me <laughs> oh, you okay no i thought it was called something else um yeah i, I feel like it kind of like carried on like the like the essence of hot sauce like the feeling of it the energy it kind of mm -hmm. just kept it going um which uh 
was really good because like I listened to this album the, for the first time today actually and uh, um, yeah again I was just pleasantly surprised of the like the momentum that the album was able to keep throughout the whole thing mm-hmm. um, yeah this like definitely kept it going and yeah yep uh, next is Dive Into You and this is actually one of my two favorite songs can't okay. really choose but I, I love this song it, it's like the most it's been the one that's like stuck to me the most it's like starts out really chill as like a really open spacey feeling but then like the clean the clean vocals and the chorus that lead into that like pop rock like yeah summery fun chorus are just so catchy i really like the layered vocals throughout it it was it was just like a really fun like summery feeling song it really stuck with me yeah yeah, this was one of the like four B sides that I, I can't really choose a favorite of. Um, yeah, I like this as well. I like so like you said, it like kind of like goes to like like pop rock, but like before that, it's like also like a really chill like just hip hop yep. like uh, like soft rap. Uh, I thought that was really nice. Um, yeah, it's just like again uh, to use the word again, it's just a nice vibe. Yep. Exactly. Uh, next is my youth. Um, I really like the instrumental in this, like it's really chill synth track. Um, and the vocal parts are pretty good. The high note parts are, were a bit much for me. Mm. Um, and I wasn't a huge fan of the auto tune rapping parts. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're usually not really a fan of that anyway. Yeah. And like, they don't need it. That, that's like our (laughs) biggest thing is like most of the time it's not needed. Like, well, I feel like that kind of thing is never really needed. It's just a stylistic well, choice, so like, and it's just yeah. Not, I guess not needed, but it doesn't fit. Like people, you do use it as a style, like just stylistic yeah. choice, but it doesn't fit with yeah, yeah. the style it feels of the song they shove it in. Yeah, because yeah. like there are definitely like rap songs out there that I think it's it's fine with. Mm-hmm. Um, but in like a song like this, it did not feel right at all. This is yeah. one of those songs where like I think this song would be so I've been I've been wanting like NCT the ballad for a million years. Like the, the I want their vocalists to make like a subunit that just puts out like that would be great cool. vocal songs. And this song to me felt like it could if you cut out the rap parts and add some of N- like NCT, like Do Young or like some of the other vocalists in NCT, like mm-hmm. this could have been a really great vocalist subunit song. Yeah. But it just, it was a little, it felt a little disjointed to me. Yeah. For me, um, this is one of the ones I liked less on the album, which like I, I pretty much liked everything on the album. This is just like in the, like a lower tier than the rest of the, yeah. Um, than some of the other ones rather uh, I feel like just for me it just felt a little like basic I guess it, like I feel like I could easily hear this on just like mainstream pop radio so, oh yeah definitely like like it's a good song but it's it's nothing that I'm like blown away by uh, by anything in particular so yeah I agree with that it, yeah I, I agree like I I sounded pretty harsh on it but like I still think it's fine um, yeah it just there were parts of it that I didn't like that much yeah Next is Rocket, and this is just fun, upbeat, like, poppy dream. It's yeah, got this really, one's one of my favorites. It's got, like, a really funky, fun chorus drop. Uh, like, this this is, like, the definition of, like, a bop. When people say a song is a bop, like, yeah. this is just a, a fun, poppy jam. Yeah. The, yeah, like, the the really nice, like, full, like, like bassy, like, synths and stuff is really what, like like got me into this one i was like as soon as i heard those i was i was like hooked right in um yeah like this is i i can't like choose a favorite b-side on this because like like there's always ones that have like do uh the four songs i like the most we've covered so far is dive into you and then rocket like they both have uh particular things that they do really strongly and in this the the pocket they're able to get into with the synths and like like just going mm-hmm. along with the percussion i it just works so well and it's just yeah really fun to like bop along to yep uh next we have countdown three two one um and this is like closer to like recent dream singles or like one two seven or stray kids um, yeah. Like this is a more like a harder hip hop song, 
I really love the layered vocals in this, though. It's got so many layers throughout the song, like, of diff- different vocal parts that really stood out to me. Um, but yeah, I thought this was just another really solid, like, jam. Yeah, I thought this was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> like, it, it, it isn't on my list of, like, favorites, but I thought this was a pretty cool, like... You know, just more of a hard like hip hop type song. Yep. And uh, one thing it actually reminds me of is in it, when I was watching the Hot Sauce NV, I was like surprised. I guess I never realized this, but like Ji Sung's like voice does not fit his face to me. Oh really? I'd have <laughs> yeah, to go back like, and like I, I like I'd hear his parts, and I'd be like, no way, that's you saying that. <laughs> like, yeah. Like yeah, his his I don't know, maybe <clears throat> it's just me, but I feel like his voice just completely does not like match his face to me. But uh. Just because I was just reminded of that because I like hear his part in this song. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, this was uh, pretty fun. And uh, I think the reason I didn't like it quite as much is because I feel like it could easily just have been a 127 song. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with that. But I feel like that's kind of just something that's been happening recently with Dream, anyway, is that they're a little bit like growing closer to 127 as they do more like quote unquote like mature concepts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think uh, generally the the songs I like the most on this album are the ones that sound the most like unique to them. So yeah, right. like I I thought this was really fun. I just felt like this could easily have been just like a one two seven song. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I could have easily seen them or like Stray Kids put this song out. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, next, we have ANL, which is a very unfortunate name. Anal. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll get over that. I So this, to me, is similar to My Youth. It's like a really chill like synth pop. But to me, this is like what I was talking about, where this has like regular rapping, like yeah. chill, low, like just low beat or like down beat synth rapping. And it just fits so much better. Um, and the bridge, like the vocals and instrumentals on the bridge, like really stood out to me. Um, so this is like, this was my youth, but way better in my opinion. Yeah. This, this is the third in my batch of like, uh, favorite tracks. Um, and it's like honestly carried by the little like popping bubble, like sounding oh, synths. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love like the, it just has such a nice like texture to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, again, uh, like the actual chorus and stuff is just nice, like uh, upbeat, feel good, summary. Um, that's kind of a thing throughout the whole album, I think, is it's it's very summer sounding, which I'm I'm glad for as we're uh, going through the spring, getting closer to the summer, just feeling uh, warmer sounds. Right. Um, next is my other favorite song, Irreplaceable. Yep. Yep, this is my um, last one. <laughs> this is like so the between this and and uh Dive into You, I these were the two I couldn't really choose from, but this song like straight out of the gate is just so good. It's got this great jazzy instrumental or like amazing bass line. Um there's brass instruments popping in from time to time. Like the vocals, the rap, the instrumentals, like everything about this song is like just really good and it's really cohesive and just yeah, like there wasn't any uh, like there's nothing bad for me to say about this song. I thought it was easily yeah. one of the best. Yeah, I think this is really nice. Like it, it just like it's really fun. It has <clears throat> like really nice vocals actually in this song. Um like you said the instrumentals are really fun. They're just like Yeah, I just you I don't know. This this is the song that along with Rocket like they have very full sound and I I love that in uh in K-pop, um, particularly, I think SM kind of does this kind of thing really, really well. Is uh, just like filling up the mix and getting nice instrumentation that like, like they feel like separate from one another, but they like cohesively kind of go really well together. Um, and yeah, like I said, uh, the vocals are really good, and uh, the rap wasn't obnoxious in any way. Like it, it was just nice, and yeah, it just went really. It was just nice again and feel good, and I think that was the uh, kind of concept behind the album was just kind of warm, um, fun sounds. And I think this is, I think this might be the like the strongest in that department is either this or Rocket. I think, and as as far as like fun factor goes for me, yeah, um, yeah. 
as far as the the B sides go, because like hot sauce was fun just with the chaos and whatnot. This yeah. is more just like uh, you know have fun on a summer day sort of thing. Yeah, I, I think for me, like this is the best song on the album. I just can't decide if it's my favorite song on the album. Yeah. Um, next we have "Be There for You." Uh, this is a piano ballad, and I just said, "Give me NCT the ballad already." Like their vocalists are so good. Uh, yeah, and like. I just want more of this. I love NCT's ballads all the time. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a good ballad, but I wasn't really blown away by it much. Like, I, nothing really stood out uh, about it to me. Um, the next song I, I did like quite a bit, though. Yeah, Rainbow, which is next, is... Yeah, I agree that Rainbow's better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is just like that sentimental slow jam. Um, yeah. It's got like a really open sound space. It's like... It's a great way to end the album because it's like an uplifting sound, but it's not like super energetic. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just got fantastic vocals and rapping like all bundled together and for this last song. Yeah. Like you said, uh, I think that's why I liked it quite a bit more is just because it had the nice, had like the, the uplifting feel with the nice vocals and like it doesn't just kind of sound like a OST ballad like sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. I think, I think this actually. I don't know. Feels nice. Um, I guess. It, I guess within like SM boy groups or whatever, like uh, it kind of reminds me of like um, what's it called? EXO's uh, "Don't Go." Like vibe wise, not really sound wise, but like just that okay. uplifting sort of ballad sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was glad we got something like that of NCT Dream because I think that worked really well to close out the album. And keep the like uplifting vibe of the whole album. Whereas I feel like Be There For You kind of broke it up a little bit. I feel like the album would be better if they just like kind of like removed that and then put it on another album later. Yeah, I agree. Like cohesiveness wise. the ballad. Album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, overall I thought this was a really, this is a really good album. I was impressed. Yeah, I... I really liked all of NCT stuff. Like they've always been impressive to me, and this is another album that's up there. Like I, and I wasn't really like. It's weird because I really like all their stuff, but I didn't have like huge expectations for it, and yeah. so like I was really surprised at how much I liked all of this this whole album. Yeah, I think I think because one two seven tends, I mean, and Dream they tend to be hit and miss for me sometimes, like because they like to try out a lot of different stuff yeah um and yeah this one ended up being a hit so yeah i i pretty much almost never go into nct with like high expectations but i i think that's good because when they do knock it out of the park they really knock it out of the park so yeah i think so i i think that might be why i don't go in with high expectations because they're always trying new things and i don't really know what to expect but i pretty much almost always like it so yeah it's not surprising that i liked this yep so yeah, that was a good album. I suggest anybody who hasn't tried it out, go check it out. Because, yeah, you need to hear Hot Sauce. Yeah, <laughs> get least. ready to like, <laughs> yeah, prepare yourself, at least, <laughs> for Hot Sauce. It's such a crazy song. I I love it. All right. Up next, we have Oh My Girl with their new mini album, which, when did this come out? Like two days ago? Yesterday? Yeah, two or three days ago. Yeah. Um, with Oh My Girls, Dear Oh My Girl, which is a little confusing of an album title because it literally yeah, just says really, Dun Dun Dance on the, on the front of it. It's also really hard to Google. Yeah, yeah. Like put your title in or put your uh, your, your name name in the title. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So starting out is the title track. Um, I guess not title track, but single. Two days ago. Yeah, the the single which is Dun Dun Dance. Um overall I thought this was actually a really good song. Uh like it doesn't feel like a single to me though. It feels like this would be a B-side, but um I don't know. I guess I'm not I'm not like super like into oh my girl, so I guess maybe I'm like uh just imagining that I guess within the context of their group. Yeah. But um uh saying that that being said, like saying that that's not a diss to this song. Cause I actually thought this is like really fun. And again, like, like with the uh, NCT dream kind of has a nice summer vibe, um, which I'm glad. I, I hope we start getting more and more and more of that as, uh, 
you know, the spring goes on because I could definitely use it after the long winter that we just went through. It yeah. kept the winter kept leaving and then coming back and then leaving and then coming yeah, back. Yeah, it always does. And it's been raining recently. Yeah, I just I want the I'm ready for the warm weather. Um, so yeah, this is nice. Um, vocals especially are really good, but I feel like they're always good with Oh My Girl. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's fun. You liked the city pop song? Yeah, that's good. It's not city pop. Uh, for some what? reason on the Spotify tags, they tag the song as city pop, which I is mean, like... I mean, I, I can see, I can no, see no, no, no. it, but like, it's not really it's like. It's just because anyone, anyone, or these people think that anything that's retro is city pop. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. It's very much yeah. not. Yeah. This is just like a dance track with like a retro funky bass line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. I think the main reason I can see that is because I could see like a retro Japanese artist making something like this. But, yeah, yeah, but it's not city pop. Yeah, um, it was just funny. Wait, so that, yeah, Spotify was, says that. Well, yeah, you know how like there's the custom Spotify tags on like when people do like now playing on. Oh, you mean oh the last and, FM tags? Or last FM tags. Sorry, okay, not Spotify. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, last someone on the last FM tag, someone tagged this as, as city pop, and everyone's making see. fun of that this morning. Everyone's like, bruh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for me, I so I think it does sound like a single, but. It does not fit with this whole album at all. Um, yeah, it is. And, it is very different from the rest of the tracks. Yeah, and it just felt a little generic to me. Mm. Um, like I don't think it's bad, but nothing really stood out to me. Um, and the rest of the album's like so different, and yeah. I liked everything else so much more that like it definitely felt like this is definitely my least favorite song on okay. the album. I liked it quite a bit, but again, I don't, I guess I don't really listen to Oh My Girl like a ton. So I, I didn't have like super like defined expectations for it. Um, yeah, well, which I, mean, I, don't really, I, don't, I don't really know why I don't because like I usually like all the songs they put out and stuff. I just, I guess I could never really return to them much, but um, this mini album overall I thought was, was really good. Um, yeah. I mean, which, the rest of this album is very different from Oh My Girl usually. Yeah. Um, so Dear You is the next song, uh, and I don't really know what the, like, genre would be, like, like, it's not R&B, it's, it's, it's like, I guess just kind of mid-tempo pop, I guess. Yeah. Um, like, it, it uses a lot of, like, hi-hats and stuff, but I feel like they're not, like, like, again, like, that's something that, like, when people overuse them is, like, really annoying to me in songs, but I feel like it works in this, like, it's, it's subtle and it helps with the like momentum of the song um i really like the kind of subdued vocals for the the like chorus and mm -hmm. i i mean i guess for the whole song really is it's very like low-key but uh yeah i thought this was a really good song as well yeah i thought this was really chill this reminded me of what you did for solos last year mm, yeah um and the rest of the whole album is like similar similar vibes as Sam would say. Um, but yeah, like the instrumental is like pretty open and the beats are simple, which is nice because it really let you focus on the vocals. Um, and yeah, I thought it was just had a really chill feeling and I thought the chorus hook was really like earwormy too. Yeah. Um, so I really like this song. Yeah. All right. So next up is, uh, my doll, which personally, I think this is probably the best song on the album. I, I really, really like this one. Mm -hmm. Um, like, the it's they do like this really cool like like vocal layering stuff in the chorus and it's yeah it sounds really like robotic but like in a good way um yeah i just i love that um i think this is a this is a like really good example of where like vocal processing works really well yeah to make the sound sound really cool um because again like that's something where like if it's like not done right like we don't really like it usually like like again like with the like like super processed like rap um i feel like for this like particular chorus the the, the vocal layering really makes the song stand out like like this uh, this is the song that probably gets stuck in my head the most from the album um i listened to the album like three or four times today and yeah this is the song that stood out easily yeah, I, I like this a lot. So I actually didn't like the beginning. 
because it has like this weird static effect on their vocals Mm. and like to me it sounded kind of bad but once it actually like got into the song like that was just for the intro but like yeah like you said once it got into the chorus it got like really interesting with all the instrumentals um and all like the vocal effects they used like it's just yeah it's got like a really nice like indie synth pop vibe with all like the glitchy vocals and synths yeah. and stuff and then there's like some acoustic guitar thrown in yeah another thing i want to mention also is like the it's like this weird like vocal sample they're using in the post chorus also i don't think it's being played backwards but it sounds like it is which is kind of interesting to me like it sounds yeah. like they're saying the same thing from the chorus Okay. But it almost sounds like it. it almost sounds like vocals being played backwards, like like how you expect that to sound, where it's like kind of being like sucked out, like sucked away, like that's what it. I don't know, like backwards vocals sound that way, I guess. But um, yeah, this was easily the best song. I I really love this song, uh, my doll. Um, yeah. So next is Quest. Um, so this one's like kind of the like hip hop like sort of influenced song um again this is like it's a little bit like uh more like again like laid back but i i think this is kind of one that i could like groove groove to like pretty easily um i guess i guess similar vibe to like shoot on uh like itsy um not really as like the same but like similar yeah, like I know. I niche know. i guess if that makes sense um and yeah, I like the like chip tuny sort of like synth they use, like yeah, you know, beep boop sort of thing. So yeah, I I, I like this one. Yeah, this is up there for me. Um, I so to me this sounded a lot like what I use been putting out a lot lately. Mm. It's got like a chill, yeah, like, like BB-ish. vocal, yeah, like BB, um, like chill synth hook, like great vocals over just like a trap beat, um. So yeah, it really reminded me of that. I I liked it a lot. I think Mimi's rap was a little long, mm. and I didn't really like it the beginning, but I think it got better as it went on. Yeah. Um. But overall, yeah, I I did like this song. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Coming up next is Who Comes Who Knows, which I so you make the IU comparison. I feel like this also kind of like fits in yeah. that as well. Um, sort of the R and B ish, like hip hop ish, uh, kind of pop song. Yep. Um, again, it kind of is like just has a nice like like trapish like sort of beat, and it kind of like gets in that pocket and sort of you know stays in there, and it's fun. So yeah, this one's probably my favorite. I I really like the energy on this song. I yeah. To me, this should have been this the single. Because it's I think that would have been really interesting, actually. Like, well, because to me, it, it it fits with the rest of the album, then like way better than Dun Dun Dance, and it, but it's got a little bit more energy than the previous songs, so I think yeah. it would have been like a better a better single. Um, mm-hmm. And I really, I thought the vocal airing with like the call and response stuff that they did was really great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th- this and the next song are probably my two favorites. Yeah, so the next song, Swan. Um, so this is another one that I feel like like I could definitely hear on like Top 40 Radio, but at the same time, this was probably my second favorite. I think it works really well. Mm-hmm. Just like, again, the energy with like the guitars, the claps, like leading up to the chorus, um, their vocals. Like it's just nice and fun, catchy. Like, yeah. I think the main thing that makes it seem Top 40 is just the just kind of drop chorus, but... It's, yeah. it's, it's fun enough that like, I can forgive it for that, that I think it, it's strong and, um, yeah, it's catchy. So I think, I think it works well. Yeah. I thought it, it starts out like open and spacey and then it just like really builds with that guitar. And like yeah. you said there, so I actually was not expecting a drop course at all with the way this was yeah, building. Yeah. I mean, either I, and, I thought it would be like a but, pop, like a yeah, yeah, pop, like, pop rockish sort of like yeah, chorus yeah, or exactly. something. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I was actually really surprised, but like you said, I, I actually think it worked pretty well with like the synths and the guitar. Um, it wasn't like an overly obnoxious drop chorus or anything. Yeah. Like um, I, I think it's like relatively meta- mellow, but it's catchy. So I think it works. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's interesting because like, it's interesting to have an album like it, 
other than other than Dun Dun Dance, like it's pretty low and like chill, and it like builds to the final song, which is like yeah. probably the most upbeat and like energetic. It's still pretty chill, but like it definitely has the most energy out of the songs. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I think, thought this album was so good. I think the song would be interesting to see like choreography for. Like it's not yeah. super high energy, but I could see them doing like cool stuff with the like in the drop chorus like movements wise i think that'd be interesting um yeah overall i thought this was a really good mini album um so i'm excited to see what oh my girl comes out with next i'm gonna have to i think i'm gonna have to go through their discography again because again like i i typically like the stuff they put out i just don't really listen to it out that often Mm -hmm. so yeah i might uh maybe tomorrow during work or something i'll uh go through their discog again I'm trying I remember, to see. I remember, like early college, I listened to it closer, like all the time, because <laughs> oh, yeah, I love closer. that song. I, that, I this album reminds me so much of Closer, like mm. and like just that chill, like vocal focused, like yeah vibe, and I think that's part of why I why I liked it so much. Yeah, um, because they've never really gone back to that. Like usually, their like all their stuff has been like very energetic or like. Yeah. At least it's been like very like upbeat and and like uplifting and yeah. we it's sometimes like experimental, but they've never gone back to that like really chill vocal focused vibe. Yeah. But yeah, um again, overall I thought this was a really good mini album. Um despite some people like not really liking Dun Dun Dance as much, I thought it was I still thought it was a good song. Um Yeah, I think it's is, fine. That is funny that it was like tagged with with uh city pop because it was rock show though um yeah um but yeah anyway scream my doll that song is really really good that's honestly like one of the best b-sides this year so far i think um so been a little, this, yeah this episode of of songs we reviewed have, has had some really good b-sides yeah for sure <clears throat> all right finally what nate's been waiting for a song of the year <laughs> Uh, Uju Sonio mini or uh, subunit of the year, uh, Uju Sonio Black or the Black uh, with my attitude. So this is last year they had Uju Sonio Takomi, which was Subin Luda Yoram and uh, who am I blanking on? I'm blanking. Who is the fourth member of Takomi? Luda, isn't she in it? I said Luda. So oh. I'm not gonna forget. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not was gonna like, forget uh, Luda. Well I, well, I was like, I was wondering why oh, you were fitting her, but I guess I didn't. Dion was there. Um, yeah. And this is their new subunit. So that was like their like fun, really bubblegum poppy, like bright girl group subunit. This is their mature, sexy yes, subunit. This is... And this is Unso, Bona, Xe, and Sola. Yeah. Um. And the single is easy, and holy shit, the bass line is so good. Yes. And their vocals are so good, and the styling is so good, and the choreography is so good. Like, just I was like, I was excited for this song, but like this still somehow like blew away my expectations. Like that sexy bass line with like their sultry vocals is just so, so good, and. There's like a part where Bona like sings in like a lower like a completely lower register than normal and I'm like just always sing like that like why do they <laughs> make her sing in a higher register like just always sing in a low girl I mean I I think female singers in general we talked about this in Discord Melissa mentioned it yeah. like female singers in general just need to sing in lower registers more often and I yeah. wholly agree like I love when when female singers have like a, a lower, deeper voice um, in their singing, and it just doesn't happen very often in K-pop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, this whole thing just blew me away. It's funny because we've been ta- we were talking like the, the music video is like better than Unnatural's music video, <laughs> which is funny because like the full group got like a worse music video. Yeah. But yeah, the styling and everything's so good. Uh, it was choreographed by Leah Kim. So like, uh, so it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, it just blew me away with how good it was. Yeah, yeah. This was way better than I was expecting. Like, so I saw like WJSN like sub you, and I was like, okay, this will be decent at least. But um, 
like with this type of song, the like usual vocal criticisms I have for WJSN, I think they're just not here. Like yeah. that, like this is this sounds good. And I I think I might have actually mentioned this last episode, but like like singing lower and they like actually do it in this well, and it yeah it works. I don't know. It's like. <laughs> That's because all the members that you think of when you give those <laughs> the vocal shrill, criticisms yeah, aren't, aren't here. here. It's yeah, like, because okay. like you're thinking like Subin and Yun Jung yeah. and it, like the, <laughs> none of those members are here. That's why. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But yeah, this like is totally amazing. I wish this was a mini album instead of a single. I like, I think like for this style, it totally like is good enough that it like give them a comeback at some point please like I, I i hope they do really well commercially because like if that means we get more of this that's amazing so yeah as far as easy goes like again uh this is a really really just good uh like yeah like you said just like the sexy bass the like it's just it, it works it works it's such a good vibe i want more of this like yeah. even if it's Actually, maybe not, even if it's just the full group. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's, uh, again, as long as they, like, like uh, peel back the shrillness, I guess, uh, I think it I think it could, like, be really good like this. I think this is, yeah. I, I, I just, I love the vibe of this. Yeah. And um, then for the B side, uh, you've kissed your lips. Um, which is interesting because it's like almost got a tropical house vibe, yeah, but it's also bit. it's mixed in with like traditional Uju Sonio synth instrumentals. Um, but I I just I loved it of course because I like all those things. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a good B side. I know a lot of people on Discord weren't a fan of it, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought this was good. Um, this is a like an example of like. Like the drop in this chorus, I thought was actually really cool. Um, mm-hmm. Again, like as as long as the, I guess I gotta kind of like change my, like official opinion on drop choruses because I don't hate them. It's just yeah. I hate annoying ones. Like if they're really cool and like interesting, I I can definitely get behind it. Because I I do like like really weird like crazy ones, and I feel like this kind of like um, fits in that category a little bit. So yeah, I thought this was really fun too. Um, it's not quite as like, uh, um, I don't know, sensual, I guess, as uh, yeah. easy. But um, I still thought it was really fun, and yeah, this is a really good B side. Yeah, this was more of like a, a upbeat dance track. Yeah, um, where easy is more of like a sexy. Yeah, dance and track. then I can, I can, I can, I can taste a little bit of the like, you know, the tropicalness in this as well. So yeah. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I'm curious why. So, they've had they've had two subunits now, and they've had eight of the ten members. I'm kind of, hmm. and it, it's weird because Yunjung would have fit into Chaco Me fine, and Da Won would have fit here fine. So, I'm curious why they didn't do five and five. But I'm do you wondering think they're if they're gonna reuse members for the next one, or just do a duo for the next? Well, that's what I'm wondering because Dawan and Yeonjung are the two main vocalists, so oh, I'm wondering so if yeah, they'll maybe do they'll a do duet, a ballad um, thing, maybe, or if it's just because they do a bunch of OSTs and stuff sometimes that like they've got their own thing already. So yeah, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. It's interesting why they didn't do five and five. Um, if they'll do a third I mean, duet if they unit or not. If they haven't done anything with the two main vocalists, I think that's I think that's obvious. I think they will. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting It'll, to see if they will. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do a Yeonjung and Dawon subunit later on. Yeah, I think that that sounds like an easy subunit to make. Like again, like TTS, uh, Samina, like sort of thing. Yeah. You know, just take like you know the main vocalist and like shove them in a subunit and do like really cool like vocal heavy songs yeah so yeah um i loved it i think it's all all the stuff we reviewed was pretty good i didn't yeah it's interesting because with oh my girl and itsy i didn't really like their singles but i like the b-sides a lot mm-hmm. and then with nct i thought the whole album was really good and who just so know unsurprisingly i loved so. yeah i liked pretty much everything this week except for 
like that one ballot on NCT. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, this is a pretty strong week. Um, really strong on B sides. Like we said before, um, there's like a ton of stuff to actually like return to and yeah, you know, revisit. So yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything we wanted to talk about. So, <laughs> all right. So I guess with that, um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, let us know your thoughts on these albums uh, for sure. Um, Cause again, we had a pretty strong week this week. So um pretty interested to see like what you guys thought like especially like with itsy like where nate and i were like completely opposite on our like opinions on certain stuff stuff? yeah so uh yeah definitely uh let us know your opinions um if you like us uh please subscribe please leave us a positive review on itunes um you know like comment uh and again uh we're doing that uh k-pop social night uh podcast fest so Yep, check out that in the description. Um, you know, buy a ticket if you can afford it. It goes to a good cause. So yeah, that'd be yep. cool. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that kind of stuff for new episodes every couple weeks. You know, bar like random crap happening in our lives. But yeah. yeah. Anyways, generally we're on schedule, so yep. So we'll uh catch you next week. Oh, no. And stay Drinking hot sauce. (laughs) Probably drinking hot sauce. Yeah. Anyway, goodbye. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought this is a really great song. I love the, her vocals are really good as always. Like, even though she's not like belting or whatever all the time in this, it's like the, her like falsetto voice is really nice. Um, yeah, the chorus is really catchy. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I, 